This started um, three years ago when Braden did a nasal rinse, and he did that under the direction of his um, allergy doctor, and he was also seeing a pulmonologist. He had lots of asthma and sinus problems, and he's been chronic sinusitis sufferer. So he did um, a nasal rinse, and he did one of those squeeze bottles that time. A couple days prior, um, he had had some resistance and some burning in the back of his head, but we st- and he hated it, but we still made him do it, and he squeezed that bottle, um, and it created an insane amount of pain for him, and he screamed, cried for 20 minutes. My eardrum, I was feeling it in my eardrum, my left ear. Many needles stabbed me rapidly in the ear kind of got over it was a really rough night um, and he went to school and then over the course of that week he called because something he was having that pain in his ear and I took him to the pediatrician and nothing was found and we took him to his ENT who had done his um, uh, sinus surgery and they didn't see anything and they did an x-ray or CT and said that we should go see a neurologist and we went to the neurologist, but during this time, he'd go to school, a sound would set his ear off, um, he'd be in pain for the rest of the day and part of the next day. At that point, any time he was around a sound that hurt, he would be in pain for 36 to 48 hours. He was in fourth grade for your what? Tonsil. Tonsils? No, not no. tonsils. Sinus My surgery. sinus surgery. Sinus surgery. And he had that because he'd had a sinus infection from September, and it was like in March, and he still had it. And we had done just antibiotic after antibiotic, um, and then even a course of a 20-day with z packs and sulfa drugs and something else. And 10 days into it, he developed a reaction to sulfa. It through x-rays, we saw that it was helping the sinuses, but we couldn't continue on that course because of the sulfa allergy, and we decided to do sinus surgery. He knew that sound was setting off the ear, and he would be in pain for 24 to 36 hours, but we were unclear on what to do. The neurologist um, did an MRI and then did an MRA, and we could find no tumors, blood clots, anything like that. And he was put on um, uh, Topamax first, which was horrible. Um, it made him like Dopamax. That, that's how he was. He couldn't even add simple numbers. And then we put him on Neurotin, 400 milligrams. Occasionally he would have maybe a shooting pain or um, something would set his ear off, but he was fine and able to do regular activities, uh, football, school, all of that. We did a hearing test because he's always had um, kind of hearing problems, I felt like. And unfortunately, the, the, the high frequency of the last test set his ear off again. And then we were right back to this repetitive um, sounds setting his ear off and, and the pain. So we had to pull him out of school again. And then that September, you were playing football. Mm-hmm. And had um, a possible concussion. Minor. Minor. Um, some neck injury probably with it. And, um, and went to the emergency room, although they didn't find anything. In the last six days since we've been here, I st- we uh, fixed up my jaw. It was sliding more to the left. Mm-hmm. So... Made a ret- we made a retainer for my mouth, which I was sleeping for. Back teeth wouldn't touch, like grind or touch at night. And I was started, well, I tried it out for one night, which was yesterday night, last night actually. I woke up at a pain three this morning, which I usually wake up at a seven since September 25th. My voice. Sarah? Um, So the the main difference that we saw from last week to this week was he was waking up at a pain level 6 rather than a 7. And then for this last several months, he would go go to sleep at a pain level 5. But he, the pain was coming down faster. Um, He was going to bed at a pain level 3, which was significant. And then yesterday when we came in the morning, um, we spent a... Dr. Sprinkle spent a great deal of time 
um, working to align his jaw to make sure that the pressure was even on both sides. It was about 70% on the left, so we knew that there was an uneven amount of pressure that was possibly um, affecting some nerves and we needed to straighten it out. So worked on taking um, a slight amount of enamel off a back tooth on his left side and then um, noticed on the um, front, a front tooth as well. Just to even everything out and using the T-scan, we were able to see that we made a significant difference um, with the jaw and things weren't getting hung up when the movement of the jaw as well.